Today, let's talk about confidence intervals with population proportions. So firstly, here are the formulas that we're going to need. So firstly, we have the confidence interval formula, the whole one. Okay. Whereas you can see, we have the true proportion in the middle. And then on the left hand side, we have an estimate. And on the right hand side, we have another estimate. Okay. Now we can de deconstruct this formula slightly. And we can see that the z times the square root of p hat times q hat over n is called the margin of error. Okay. Now, as you can see, this is on both sides. Therefore, if we sub in, if we substitute this whole thing for e margin of error, we get the confidence interval, which is p hat minus the margin of error, comma p hat plus the margin of error. So this would be our confidence interval, where this is the lower bound, and this is the upper bound of the confidence interval. Okay. And in order to estimate meaningful confidence intervals, they need to meet two requirements. So firstly, the size of the sample has to be no more than 5% of the size of the population it was drawn from. And secondly, it has to approximate to a standard normal distribution. And this is so we can uh, use the Z distribution. In order to do this, we're going to use this formula, N times P times one minus P, and it has to be higher or equal than 10. Okay, so let's look at the example. This example reads, an opinion poll in the US finds that 15% of the sample believe in the conspiracy theory that the deep state is undermining the president. The number of people questioned is 750. Construct a 95% confidence interval for the overall proportion of Americans who hold this belief. Okay. So first thing to do firstly is, do they meet the first requirement? So the size of the sample is no more than 5% of the size of the population was drawn from. So here we have number of people questioned in the US, so 750. So this is clearly much, much less than 5% of the whole United States, of the whole population of the United States. Okay, so it meets the first requirement. What about the second one? Does it approximate to a standard normal distribution? So in order to do this, let's write down first the sample size. So we said it's 750. And then the proportion in this case, it says that 15% of the sample believe in the conspiracy theory. Therefore, the proportion is, sample proportion is 15%. Or, sorry, as a proportion, that would be 50%. 15% divided by 100. Therefore, the proportion will be 0 0.15. Okay. So let's plug in the numbers here. So 750 times 0 0.15 times 1 minus 0 0.15. And this has to be higher or equal than 10. Okay. So let's solve this. So we have 750 times 0 0.15 times 1 minus 0 0.15, which is 0 0.85. And this gives us 95.625, which is clearly more than 10. Therefore, we can approximate this to a standard normal distribution, which means that we can use the Z table. And you'll see how in a minute. Okay. So now that the two requirements are met, we can use this formula in order to find out the confidence interval. Okay. Now, the first thing to do, and also I didn't mention, in order to find out Q hat, Q hat is simply one minus P hat, which we said was 0 0.85. Okay. So as you can see, we have everything we need apart from the Z value. Now, again, remember, we can approximate this to a standard normal distribution, which looks something like this. And the confidence level is 95%. So this means that because it's a confidence interval, right, we're going to have a lower bound and upper bound. So we're going to have a shade there on each side with corresponding Z values. 
and the area in the middle would be 0 0.95 okay therefore what's left over so the five percent will be equally distributed between those two shaded areas so therefore we have 2.5 percent on this side and 2.5 percent on this side perfect so let's find the z value now so in order to find the z value what we do is we look for the shaded area okay our shaded area we said was 2.5 percent on each side so the same thing right so 2.5 percent if we look for that we should come here okay so as you can see 0 0.025 then we go horizontally and vertically in order to find out the value so as you can see we get minus point minus 1.9 and then decimal place is 0 0.06 so the z value is plus or minus because this can be used for plus or minus 1.96 so this is our z value okay so this would be 1.96 and minus 1.96 Excellent. So now we have everything we need. So all we need to do now is just plug in the values. So p hat, the sample proportion, 0 0.15 minus z value, square root of p hat times q hat over the sample size. Okay, and we do this on both sides which is essentially the same but on the one hand on the one hand we have a positive z value on the other hand we have a negative z value okay this is slightly tight but okay so this is what the confidence interval looks like and then so if we solve the margin of error so we would get 0 0.15 minus 0 0.026, okay? So this whole thing is equal to minus 0 0.026. And then the other side, 0 0.15 plus 0 0.026. Okay. And finally, if we solve this again, we get 0 0.124 comma 0 0.176. So this would be our confidence interval, okay? So the confidence interval is equal to this. And remember, as I said, this is the lower bound. And this is the upper bound. Now, don't be confused with what I did here going from writing it like this to a comma. This is simply the same as writing here 0 0.124 and then a 0 0.176, okay? This is the equivalent. However, when you write down the confidence interval, an interval is written this way with a lower bound value, comma, and upper bound value. So what this result means is that we can say with a 95% confidence level that the overall proportion of Americans who hold this belief is between these two values. Okay, so that's it for this exercise. And let me know down in the comments if there's any questions.